Welcome to another Retro Groove video. This one is about all the mistakes I have made in the last five years. No, it's not. No, no, no. All the mistakes I have made in purchasing items to resell via my online business in the last five years. So, first one. First day covers stamps. Stamps in general. So, this is what I purchased. Back on the 30th of September in 2019, uh, lot number 288 from Jolly Auction House in the UK, I purchased approximately 220 first day covers. Some of them were pre decibel and I paid a hammer price of £32. So that worked out around about £40 for 220 first day covers. I was going to be absolutely minted. If I got a pound each for them that was going to be 220 pounds and i was so excited about it because stamps stamps are great everybody makes money on stamps don't they no the collector's dolls they're an abundance of them they're all box they're all mints so uh, i would recommend you stay clear of them there are only a very 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 few of them and you'd have to buy those individually that are a quirky or a rare one so stay clear. Again, these were Pendelfin figures, but they're collections. Now this applies to lots of other collections of specific figures. So these are small figures that people went and buy for around 15, 20 pounds each, which were quite expensive. The market burst. There was only a very, 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 very few select figures that were a limited edition that in true sense limited edition or had got a design fault that are worth it the majority of them and this example was Pendelfin figures but it could be a consider it could be Eni Blyton figures it could be all those sort of small ceramic figures the market is saturated with them everybody bought them everyone bought their nan one back from wherever they went and they had one every Christmas so you are in an absolutely saturated market so stay clear Mixed lots. Now, I've had some great success with these, but I have had some absolute nightmares. What I mean by mixed lots, effectively you're buying what the auctioneer terms a mixed lots of collectibles. In essence, some of these can be junk. Somebody else's junk. They just put them into five boxes. The auctioneer has maybe catalogued them, sees nothing of any value, and puts them in as a mixed lot and you purchase them. Only thing I can recommend is that you must go and view the mixed lots because you can find some gems in there. But as a general rule, if you are buying, like in this photo, a five box mixed lot and you are not going to view it, you're only visually going to see what you can see on the screen. You won't know of any damage, you won't know of any breakages, you won't know if they are complete. So my experience has been that when you are buying low value mixed lots where there are lots of items of covered, it is a lottery. So be very, very careful on buying effectively somebody else's junk that's been put into loads of boxes and sold at a premium to you via the auction. In general, old tech. If you are purchasing old technology, like these were iPads, Androids, they're years old and nobody wants them. So you think because it's an iPad or because it's a Samsung tablet that it's going to be an easy sell. It's not. So do your research on them. Do not blindly buy or unless you have someone who is a tech expert to uh, help you with your purchases, I would stay clear with them for general selling. Those wonderful collector's plates, everyone had them. And by the nature of them, by the name, they're called collector's plates. So everybody thinks they are very collectible. They were in 1990. Unfortunately, they're now everywhere. So there's a lot of collector's plates and they're still churning them out as collector's plates, especially UK Royal memorabilia collector plates. Don't buy them. They're not even worth it to eat your dinner off because you can't actually eat your dinner off them because they're not suitable for food use. You may find a rare gem, but in general, if I see a bunch of collector's plates, they stay there. They're known 
Diecast cars. This is controversial and uh, a lot of people will disagree with me totally on this. I'm talking specifically about large quantities of play-worn die-cast cars. Everyone thinks, oh, it's a die-cast car, there's going to be a market out there. These are still sold in Asda, Tesco, Amazon, Walmart. Now, you can buy a brand new Hot Wheels die-cast car for $1.79 in Walmart. I know I bought quite a lot for our grandson when we were out in Las Vegas. So, avoid them. They are just play on cars that, although they're relatively cheap, you just cannot sell them. So, die-cast, boxed, limited editions, special editions, old, great. General, mixed die-cast cars are not even worth the scrap metal. Collector's cards. The ones that came free with the tea, free with the cornflakes, free in the cigarette packets, the ones that you bought in bubblegum, all those old mainstream collector's cards that everyone had. You bought an album, it came through the post, you put the cards in and you collect them on a weekly basis. There are absolutely thousands and thousands and thousands of complete collections and incomplete collections out there and they just do not sell. Large collections of prints, pictures, paintings, um, these are normally put together by the auctioneer and sold as a job lot. They are quite big to move, so they don't get missed. So somebody will be looking at them and moving them, so they will normally notice any of the originals, any of the limited editions, so they won't be available in these big lots. A lot of them are faded, and a faded picture cannot be sold. So I've not had much success with large lots. You may find a hidden gem. There may be a Van Gogh in one that you buy, but I keep clear with them. And finally, postcards. I'm stopping at postcards for this video because if some of you are here, you, you're probably bored. And postcards, they are just not wanted. And they are a hugely time consuming exercise to catalogue and find out if they are and postage we sell online so postage over value totally makes them a non-starter for us so we now avoid postcards